Hi, in this video, we will learn about a characteristic of linearly dependent sets of vectors. And we will learn that, well, in such sets of vectors, you can write one of the vectors as linear combinations of the other ones. Let us start recalling what was the definition of linearly dependent uh, vectors. So we say V1 up to Vm are linearly dependent if if you can write zero as non-trivial linear combinations of these vectors in other words if there are <coughs> uh, constants um, c1 up to cm at least one of which is not zero it's non zero such that we can write zero vector as linear combinations of vectors c1 c2 up to cm with these coefficients well, this is about the linearly uh, dependent sets and how you write linear uh, combinations, zero as linear combinations of these guys as non-trivial uh, linear combinations. But this can be uh, pushed a little bit more and we can prove that, well, if actually one of these vectors, so let's, let's assume that c1 is non-zero why it is important c1 c1 well you will see in a second why non-zero being non-zero is important so in that case i can take everything else to the other side minus sorry c2 v2 minus goes up to minus cm vm then since a c1 is non-zero we can divide both sides by c1 and we get v1 is equal to minus c2 over c1 v2 and this goes up to minus cm over c1 vm and what this shows is that actually v, v1 is a linear combination of of um, of v2 of the other vectors vm with coefficients minus c2 over c1 up to minus cm over c1 well um, and actually this is not only for c1 any of these coefficients which are non-zero the that corresponding vector can be written as linear combinations of the other ones and well it doesn't matter if c1 is zero you can find another one which ha is non-zero because at least one of these guys is supposed to be non-zero and you can always write at least one of these vectors as linear combinations of the other ones and well, even the important thing is that this is two-sided. It means that it will, uh, if you have one of the vectors as linear combinations of the other ones, you will definitely see that these vectors are linearly dependent. So this is the theorem which says uh, vectors V1 up to Vm are linearly dependent this is an equivalent condition if and only if it means that well, you can use as definition that's that's what it means uh, if and only if at least one of these vectors
can be written as a linear combination of others. This is this is another way of checking if a if set of uh, given vectors are linearly dependent or not. Check if you can write one of these as linear combinations of the other one. But you have to be careful. So let me put this as a remark. The theorem does not say the theorem does not says that uh, that that all of the vectors can be written as a linear combination. So the theorem does not say that every one of these vectors can be written as as the as a as a linear combination of others so this statement is not true well it only says at least one of them can be written there might be cases that you cannot one write one of them as linear combinations of the other ones but still the 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 set is linearly independent for example the vectors the vectors uh one negative two this let us call this v1 v2 is negative 3 6 and v3 is 1 1 these are linearly dependent well you can check it uh, just by uh, doing the regular um, I will write y you check it yourself uh, and actually I will tell you well why uh, this because I can write uh, actually what I can write uh, two times v1 e plus v2 plus zero times v3 is equal to zero you can check this one definitely and you can see that and you can see that well v2 is obviously minus 2 v1 minus 0 v3 that's that's uh, one case or you can write v1 as minus half of v2 plus or let me just write plus 0 v3 this v1 and v2 can be written as linear combinations of uh, the others so v1 and v2 can be written as the as a linear combinations of v the other two However, we cannot do this for V3. V3 is not linear. Uh, is, uh, cannot be written as, sorry. Uh, cannot be written as linear combinations of v1 and v2 you check it yourself you will see you you have the tools now you can see that if you form the uh, v1 v2 then v3 this won't have any solution it will be inconsistent 
And why is that? So this is because this coefficient zero here, uh, as you saw in the proof that coefficient zero only works well for the case that, that, uh, um, sorry, we can write the a vector as linear combination of, uh, combination of the other ones if it's coefficient in this, in this combination is non-zero. And you see that in this case, this gives us something. And another uh, remark is that, let me write remark two. What does this say is it's interesting is that every set of vectors uh, containing zero vector is linearly dependent. Well, you can do different ways this one. Well, uh, method one to see this one is, um, well, if you have vectors, say B1 up to Bm, and you have zero vector, I can always say, okay, you multiply this guy by zero, this guy by zero, everything by zero, but multiply a zero vector by any non-zero number, like one. Then when you add these guys, this is zero, zero vector. And you see that, well, there is a non-zero solution that is a non-trivial linear combination. This is non-zero. And that means that, well, these guys are linearly dependent but other way of seeing that is what we just uh, using what we have the theorem because if you have zero vector now zero vector as one of these guys i can write as linear combinations of the other vectors and this linear combination is the trivial linear combination see we wrote this vector vm plus one one of these vectors as linear combination this doesn't say non-trivial linear combination as a linear combinations of the other ones that means that while well, the set v1 up to vm and zero vector is non-zero is is linearly dependent Okay, so that's uh, that's another remark, and remark three is more like a special case of these guys. So if we have two vectors in any RM, V M, V V one, V two, these are linearly dependent. Are linearly dependent. If we can write one of them as linear combination of the other one, yes. But linear combination of one vector is you just multiply that by a constant. That's only possibility we have. Or you can write, you can say, okay, I can write V2 as linear combination of V1. But doesn't matter. In both cases, you see that if you have only two vectors, these are linearly dependent if and only if one of them or let me just write this way if and only if they are parallel so in other words one is multiple of the other one okay and well let me just finish the video with one last example um, show uh, that for any two vectors vector uh, set v1 v2 okay the set 
V1, V2, and V1 plus V2 is linearly dependent set. And why is that so? Because you see, we have one vector, two vector, and three vectors, yes? So let's call this one V3. And V3 is V1 plus V2, but V1 plus V2 is nothing but linear combinations of V1 and V2, yes? So we wrote V3 uh, as a linear combination of nation of V1 and V2. So this means that these guys are linearly dependent. And well, that's the, that's the case or implications of this theorem that we have here. Again, so you have to be very careful about the statement of the theorem. Only one of them, or at least one of them, is linear combinations of the other ones. That means that the set is linearly dependent.